Hello, my name is Anna and I love trying vintage recipes. So today I'm trying three casserole recipes from 1952. Today's recipes come to us from More Casserole Cookery, and I will talk more about this book a little bit later. I chose three different casserole recipes from this cookbook, and the first one is going to be green beans and ham cooked in cheese sauce. So it's very similar to a green bean casserole, but not quite what we would imagine as like the traditional green beans, cream of mushroom soup, French fried onions on top. From the information that I found, that particular casserole was invented, created in 1955, and this recipe came out in 1952. So maybe it was a little bit of a precursor to that one. So that is my recipe and the binding style on this cookbook. So interesting. I kind of can't wait to talk about it. I'm probably the only person who's interested in the binding styles of cookbooks. This sauce starts, it's just a basic cheese sauce. So we're going to start with some melted butter. Well, whole butter that I'm going to melt. I'm cutting this recipe in half, but as usual, I will have the full recipe in the description down below. And then right over there, I actually have my green beans. I went ahead and cooked those ahead of time. My butter is pretty much melted, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add my flour. Blend that together until a smooth paste is formed. And yes, this is my beloved twist whisk. So if you twist the top, it turns into a balloon whisk. I will link this in the description down below. I think I should just keep it linked on all of my videos because people ask every time I use it. So I've got my smooth paste. Now I need to slowly whisk in some milk. Just add a little at a time and then whisk those lumps out. Well, it feels like an incredibly thick sauce. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add my cheese. This is just cheddar cheese. I'll let that melt. Normally I like to cook these recipes as directed. So for now, I'm not going to add any additional liquid, but yeah, you can see. <laughs> Yeah, the consistency is a little different. And seasonings include nutmeg, a little sprinkle of salt, a little bit of pepper. Stir that in just to combine. And now it's time to assemble the casserole. So I just have some French style, like frozen French style green beans that I cooked on the stove as directed. And the recipe, it, just, it doesn't give the amount of like ounces on the package. But the size of frozen vegetable packages when this cookbook was published was like right around 10 ounces. So that's what I used. Need to combine those green beans with my sauce. Even though I drained the beans, there's like some moisture in there. So I think that's maybe why they made this cheese sauce so thick. That's very squeaky, sorry. <laughs> You think about green bean casserole, like your traditional with cream of mushroom soup, like that does have kind of a thickness to it as well. I have a buttered casserole dish right here. It's like the perfect fit. And now I'm supposed to top it with some diced ham or you can also use bacon. I had some deli ham that I really wanted to use up. So that is what I am using. And I kind of like how they use this. I thought for sure it would be like mixed into the casserole, but they're using it as a topper. So I hope that it gets kind of like browned, maybe even a little crispy. That would be really nice. Get that evenly distributed. So this goes into the oven at 350 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. That's what we have going on. I baked this for 25 minutes, the full 25 minutes, because I wanted that ham to get a little bit brown around the edges, which is exactly what happened. It smells really, really good. I can really smell the ham. All that's left is to give it a taste. So that is what I'm gonna do. We're just gonna try a little bit to start. I'm gonna make sure I get a little bit of everything in my first bite. Mmm. That's delicious. Oh my. I did add a little bit more salt to the green beans before I put it in the casserole dish. That nutmeg, it kind of makes it along with the ham. Like the combination is just really delicious. The combination of everything. I love French green beans, like the shredded kind of like thin green beans. It adds a really nice like textural element to this. I think using deli ham for me at least, you know, those thin little pieces really did get brown around the edges, which I enjoy. Yeah, I really like this. Definitely a little bit of a different take on your traditional green bean casserole. I've learned that there are some of you out there who do not like tuna. Unfortunately, this is a tuna recipe. I like tuna. I don't mind it at all. I grew up eating it. I think it's a very inexpensive way to add protein to dishes. I really personally wanted to try this recipe, so that's why I'm making it. We're starting out in a really similar way to the first casserole I made 
in that we're gonna start with melting some butter. Forgot to show it when I first started, but that is the recipe that I'm making. And again, with the butter, we've got flour. So many of these casseroles, okay, two out of the <laughs> many casseroles in this book, and I suspect there are more, start with butter and flour. It just says to melt the butter and then rub the flour into the butter until a smooth paste forms. And I would say that is rather pasty. So now I have my chicken broth. So not quite a white sauce. This sauce almost reminds me of a hollandaise, except of course, you know, hollandaise doesn't typically have flour in it or chicken broth. I don't know, you'll see what I mean in a little bit. It has some hollandaise-esque ingredients. I know there are a lot of new faces here as well. So hi, hello, welcome. But I have had several people ask me, why don't you include amounts while you're cooking? Typically the recipes that I make do appear in the description below my videos. And the reason I don't include measurements while I'm cooking is because I typically cut recipes in half. I feel like giving amounts while I'm cooking would, would cause some confusion. So usually I just kind of like make the recipe and then I include the, the amounts and the instructions below my videos. Hopefully that clears things up a little bit. So I'm just kind of whisking that until it gets smooth and everything's incorporated. So now I'm gonna turn the heat off. And the next ingredient I'm supposed to add, the juice of a lemon, or in my case, half of a lemon because I am cutting this recipe in half. And yes, of course I used my tiny, teeny little juicer. So I'm just gonna add the lemon juice and then I have an egg yolk here. I separated it off camera. So I'm supposed to beat that a little bit and then add that. And these are the ingredients, some of the ingredients in hollandaise. So like melted butter, lemon juice, egg yolk, you know, Ugh, I'm a nervous. We're gonna add it very slowly <laughs> and just really whisk it. <laughs> I don't wanna scramble it. Don't you dare. Oh, that's beautiful. That is gorgeous. That is luxurious. A little bit of pepper and a bit of salt. Get that all incorporated. So now that I have my sauce, it's time to assemble the rest of my ingredients. Just another look at that lovely, like velvety looking sauce. I did sneak a little taste and it is delicious. It's very bright and lemony. I have my spinach. This is just spinach that I cooked from frozen. I'm supposed to mix half of my sauce with it. Oops, I'm just throwing stuff around. <laughs> I'm a bit of a messy cook and that's fine. <laughs> Honestly though, I think I'd probably just like eat that as is, it looks so good. Like kind of like a lemony creamed spinach without cream, I guess. <laughs> anyway, that goes into a shallow casserole dish and don't you worry, the tuna is coming. <laughs> so spread that mixture on the bottom of a buttered casserole dish and now, the part that everybody's gonna love. We've got tuna and that goes like that. And the rest of the sauce goes on top. And it's not done yet. Although the ingredients list ends there, the actual recipe states that you need buttered breadcrumbs for the top, which I totally agree with. It just doesn't appear at the top with the other ingredients. So I went ahead, I melted like, I don't know, I think it was about a tablespoon of butter and I'm gonna mix some breadcrumbs in with it. I'll start with a tablespoon of breadcrumbs, see where that gets me. Oh yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit more breadcrumbs, I think. I love a buttered breadcrumb topping. It gets toasty and delicious. So this was a good addition for sure. Even if they didn't talk about it in the original ingredients list. I think two tablespoons of breadcrumbs and I'm using panko breadcrumbs. I realized that that's not what it would have been used, but that's what I had. So two tablespoons of breadcrumbs to one tablespoon of melted butter. You might even be able to go three tablespoons of breadcrumbs, but I like mine extra buttery. That is what it's looking like pre-bake. So now this goes into a 350 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes. Again, very similar temperature and timing as the first casserole. Hello. I ended up baking this for an extra 10 minutes. I wanted it to brown a little bit more on the top that it did just with the original 25 minute bake time. It's pretty good. It smelled good, 
while it was baking. So I'm gonna get a little taste here. Okay, saucy. You didn't get a fork. Now you know where we keep the forks in our house. Make sure I get a bite of everything. Hmm, I really like the sauce. I liked the sauce as it was going into the casserole. It's, it's just got like a really nice bright lemony flavor. Texturally, I think this could use something. I don't mind the taste of the tuna. I like tuna. I like tuna and lemon. I think that's a good flavor combo. I don't know that the spinach alone offers like enough body. It's almost like too soft. Maybe rice or something would be good mixed with this. Just something to give it a little bit more heft. Or instead of mixing something in, I wonder if you could like eat this over toast or noodles or like puff pastry or something like that. A lot of the vintage recipes I make are like that, where you make something and then you put it over something else. I think it just it just needs a little bit, a little bit extra. But flavor-wise, I'm a big fan. Next up, I have potatoes baked with sour cream and mushrooms. This cookbook is really not all about the clever names. <laughs> all of these recipes have been like this thing baked with this other thing in this thing, like not like potato mushroom surprise or anything like that. I really do like the description of this recipe that's given in the book somewhat different from the church supper version of scalloped potatoes. Not that there's anything wrong with the church supper version of scalloped potatoes, but I do detect like maybe a little bit of disdain in the author's like tone. And I'll probably get into that a little bit when I talk about the book. I did do a little bit of prep work on all of my ingredients. So I peeled my potatoes and then I sliced them to one quarter of an inch on my mandolin slicer. And then I parboiled these for eight minutes in some boiling salted water. I also zested one lemon with my microplane. This is a very handy little gadget if you don't have one. I will go ahead and link it in the description down below. And I also sliced my mushrooms, which brings us to this point. The first step of the recipe just says to saute the mushrooms in some melted butter. It doesn't say how much melted butter, so I'm going for a couple of tablespoons. One thing I will say for all of these casseroles, they all start with melted butter, and I think that is a great first step. I'm gonna add my sliced mushrooms. And I'm just gonna let those cook and saute for a few minutes. I have yet another tiny buttered casserole dish. I've got to layer my ingredients, starting with the potatoes. I did let these cool so that I could handle them. I'm going to layer these with the mushrooms and the mushrooms are going to end up on top. So I'm thinking potato, mushroom, potato, mushroom is the way to go here. And my mushrooms, which are still sizzling. I love mushrooms, I love Mushrooms sauteed in butter, especially. And the rest of the mushrooms. Now I have to mix my sour cream with the lemon zest. And it says lots of freshly ground black pepper. So we'll go for lots. It seems like lots to me. And it just says salt. This is basically the only seasoning besides the boiling salted water that I cook the potatoes in. I feel like this sauce has to do some heavy lifting. Pour over the potatoes and mushrooms. My thought is that I may have layered this slightly differently, maybe putting the sour cream you know, in between the layers instead of all of it on top. But again, I am trying to make this recipe as closely to the instructions as I possibly can. So now I have to bake this at 325 for 20 to 25 minutes. 15 to 20 minutes, sorry. <laughs> so there's a bit of a closer look for you. Pretty much the same but hot now. I smell the lemon a lot. I mean, you put lemon zest in something and that is bound to be sort of like a dominant scent. I don't know what to expect. There's a few cracks in the top. My hope is that some of the flavor from this sour cream sauce has kind of like seeped into the other layers, but we'll find out. Doesn't seem like it's, <laughs> like it's really penetrated the other layers much. <laughs> I just don't know how this one is gonna be. If it, it just doesn't seem like it's gonna be that flavorful. I hope I'm wrong, I really do. So let's get a mushroom, let's get a potato. Let's get some sour cream. It's not bad. It's like not 
flavors that I expected together, I guess. Let me get another bite here. I mean, it's pretty good. Just boiled potatoes with seasoned sour cream. I do like the lemon zest a lot. I'm liking it a little bit more with each bite. I don't know that it's like worth all of the work that I put into like prepping the ingredients. I would almost rather have like a baked potato with the sour cream. That said, I don't dislike it. All of my recipes today came from More Casserole Cookery. This book was published in 1952. If you've been with me for a really long time, you may recognize this from one of my past cookbook hauls. I found this at St. Vincent de Paul while we were living in California. And let me tell you, that St. Vincent de Paul is one of the things I miss the most. If you are anywhere near Fremont, California, and you love books, and you especially love cookbooks, you gotta check this place out. Every time I went, like it was, it was incredible. The book selection in general and the cookbook selection especially was just fantastic. <laughs> I do consider this a very lucky find. Like that particular day that I went thrifting there, I, I came away with some amazing stuff. I briefly mentioned the binding on this cookbook. It is so unusual. Like, it might be the only cookbook that I have that is this like, pad style and I think the intention may have been to stand it on your countertop like this while you're cooking from it. So the title is More Casserole Cookery which indicates that there is an original casserole cookery. I don't have that book but it says by Marion Tracy for devotees of the standard bestseller casserole cookery. She does mention publishing that book in the introduction it was 10 years ago that Nino Tracy and I wrote Casserole Cookery, a book about the rather specialized way of cooking, then not too well known. I tried to get a little more information on this and casseroles have been around for ages, like long, long time, meaning like centuries. Maybe they didn't call it casserole, but things baked in vessels, <laughs> it's it, that that particular dish has been around in a long, for a long time. Maybe it was just, it just wasn't known as like a casserole. It says decorations by Marguerite Burgess and the decorations are these like illustrations, these cute line drawings. Every recipe pretty much has one. There's like a little something on each page. One thing I really didn't talk about while I was cooking is the delightful menus, full menus that are included with each recipe. Well, let's go back to green beans and ham baked in cheese sauce. So you can see title, recipe with the ingredients, the story behind the recipe, and then a full menu of like what to serve with this. So with the green beans and ham baked in cheese sauce, the full menu is salad of tomato aspic with hearts of artichokes embedded in it, lettuce, French dressing or mayonnaise, French bread and chocolate pudding made with almonds and a jigger of rum and then coffee as your beverage. So pretty involved menus, like a lot of thought went into these. And then the story behind this recipe says beans promoted to the main course with the flavor of meat for the anti-vegetarians. Okay, <laughs> okay, Marion. She has quite a sharp sense of humor, I will say that. And she seems pretty like highfalutin. <laughs> a lady of sophisticated tastes, there's this whole uh, section at the beginning and it's basically the types of ingredients used in these recipes, what you should keep on your shelves. And she encourages you to buy your spices in New York City at Macy's if you don't have a local source. And then there's a lot of other retailers here in New York City specifically that I, I don't even know if they're there anymore. Bellows and Company, Charles and Company. I will really, I'll have to look those up and see like, are they still there? I mean, something tells me probably not. There's one particular recipe in here that um, when I was planning this video, this, this had me, <laughs> this really had me going. Sweet potatoes stuffed with birds. Stuffed with birds. And the birds in question are it says four tiny birds, so quail or dove. It says you can also do four boned chicken breast, but really the effect would be best if you used actual tiny birds. <laughs> uh, that one caught me. I mean, I know that people eat quail and dove. I'm not gonna say that it's like the most common thing today. I don't even know how common it was back then. I know people in the comments are probably gonna be like, hey now, I eat bird. Sure. <laughs> 
the name alone, sweet potatoes stuffed with birds, it's like so blatant and like in your face. <laughs> like just take a sweet potato, put a bird inside. Anyway, that was one of my favorites. As for the recipes that I cooked, I think my favorite was probably the green beans in the cheese sauce. Probably the closest to something that like I've already had, green bean casserole. With just a little bit of a twist, the ham sprinkled on the top was a really nice touch. It added a lot of flavor. It made the casserole look really good. The tuna and spinach, I thought it was good flavor-wise. I am going to, you know, reheat the leftovers and eat them and everything, but I think I'm gonna mix it with some rice. It would just kind of improve the texture. It was really like oddly soft. The spinach is very soft because it's cooked, and then you have that that sauce, which is really delicious, and the only thing that like gave it some bite was like the tuna and the breadcrumbs. So it definitely needs needs a little something. The potatoes and mushrooms baked in sour cream. I actually liked that more and more as I took more bites of it. I ate a little bit more of it off camera. I would layer the sour cream in between the layers of like mushroom and potatoes. Instead of taking all of that seasoned sour cream and like spreading it on the top, you know, it doesn't like get into the other layers. I'd layer it and I think it would just improve everything. The seasoned sour cream was great. I love the lemon zest. The lemon zest is kind of one of those things that adds such flavor, but like maybe we don't always think to use it, especially in a recipe like this. What could have been really good? I'm getting into like loaded baked potato territory. Uh, it would have been really great to use some like green onions or better yet, if you have a Trader Joe's near you and you are familiar with their seasoning blends, the green goddess seasoning. That is by far my favorite seasoning blend of theirs. I keep a couple of jars in my pantry at all times. I've, I've bought some specifically to give to other people. I just think it is so good. And it has the flavors I'm describing. It has some like chives in it. It also has some lemon zest in it. So it's got a mix of those two kinds of flavors. Maybe sprinkling some of that seasoning on each layer. I think it would make the dish so much better. I just think you have to make a couple of changes, like how you put the dish together. I think it would make a huge, huge difference. So that was my experience with some 1950s casseroles. Maybe not automatically what you think of when you think of a casserole. You probably, you know, possibly think of like noodles, cream of mushroom soup, chicken, vegetable. That's kind of like the formula for a casserole. I just wanted to pick a few that were like mm, a little bit different. Have you made any of these casseroles? Did you grow up eating any of these casseroles? I would love to hear about that. So please leave me a comment. If you love recipes and cookbooks from the 1950s like I do, I have an entire playlist and I will link it in the description down below. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post videos about food, vintage cookbooks, and retro recipes every week. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.